They lose BB1SHZ is 7.2 ounces of aluminum and plastic fish catching fury. The one piece aluminum frame, 10 ball bearings, and 14 pounds of drag are sure enough to rip the fish out of the heaviest of cover. But all of this doesn't mean anything if you don't keep it clean. Alright guys, today we're going to talk about this reel. Y'all remember this reel? From last year, it pissed me off on a couple episodes. Awesome. Okay. Doing it again. Oh, I hate when expensive reels freaking quit working. Two hundred dollar reels should not quit working. And rightfully so. It's an expensive reel. This is a Luz BB-1 SHZ. This is a $160 reel. It shouldn't fail on me. Now, on its behalf, it has not had the easiest of lives. There you go. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, get out of there. Get in there, baby. <laughs> Bam! Woo, woo! And there's this. Good fish! Jesus! And... Hey, it's... Told y'all, told y'all I was a big one. Oh my goodness. Oh, what a fish. Oh. <laughs> I guess you could say it has a right to fail. But I don't think so. Well, after I calmed down, I started to think about it. The inner reverse bearing is a bearing. What it is, is a cam lock, and I'm going to try to explain it. Uh, you have a sleeve on a shaft spinning, and you have this oblong-shaped bearing race, or bearing roller, basically. It doesn't spin, it just sits there and rides on that sleeve. Well, as the sleeves pass in this way, it's fine, but as soon as it tries to go back, that cam lock locks in instantly. Instantly stopping the reel. Well, I've never cleaned it. I thought, well, maybe, maybe I just need to clean the darn thing. It's a bearing. It has moving parts. It might be stuck. So I took it apart and I cleaned it. And it seems to be working fine. So today we're going to go over that. I'm going to go over the simple little cleaning of these reels. It's not that difficult. Don't let it, uh, overwhelm you and in fact they're very easy nowadays they're a lot easier than they used to be they used to be pretty darn difficult to get into but now they're very easy and in fact you can do this on the rod very simply you don't even have to cut the line you can do it right here on the rod all right guys like i explained it's going to be fairly simple to get into these newer reels and what you're going to need is a screwdriver a 10 millimeter either socket or a little wrench you got oil here for the bearings. This is a, actually I found this, it's a brake oil. It is a oil designed for the centrifugal brake, the inner reverse brake that's going out on this one. And some uh, grease here for the gears. Let's go ahead and get a towel down, protect this table, and I'm gonna go ahead and get into tearing this thing down. All right, what we're gonna start with 
you can do a basic cleaning of these reels while it's on the rod. And I'm going to walk you, you we got to get to that point anyway, so I'm going to walk you through that. This side plate is going to be the first thing to come off. And all we got to do on this particular model, some reels have a, a little lock down here that you slide forward and it unlocks it. This one, the locks over here. I pull this out and I twist the side plate. Now you see the side plate is, is cocked over. All you do is wiggle that off and there you go. You have one bearing right there. That's simple to get to. Here is your centrifugal brakes. Uh, you know, this is on this particular reel, they don't have a knob on this side to set it. So you got to pull this plate off and you can pop some of these out or pop them in, depending on if you want it free spooled or if you want it more of a, a resistant, more resistance on your spool. And now if you pull this spool out, you can still do this with the line running through the, uh, through the worm gear. You can get to this bearing here and then you pull this off. This is just another break and you have a bearing here. Sorry, it reels in that way. You have a bearing right here. Well, now you've, you've done oiled most of the bearings that see most of the moisture and most of the load while you're fishing. So this is kind of a good, just a real trip or something to do this. I fail at this. I'm just letting you guys know, I don't clean my reels much. This is why this one evidently failed me. I'm no old school. I don't like, I think they should just last, but Hey, this is something that's good to do every trip when you get back or every other trip. I know every trip's a lot. Now I'll take this spool out in order to get to my centrifugal bearing here and to get to the gears and the other bearings to clean them. We need to get the spool out and we need to get into this cover here. So take the spool out. Now we need to get this, this whole handle off. So what I'm going to do first is pull this screw out. This is holding this little retaining plate that keeps the nut from backing out. So a plate right here, pull the bolt, the screw out and pull the plate off. That's where it helps to have fingernails. There we go. Now we can get the bolt, the nut loose. 10 millimeter. It's not going to be all that tight. There we go. Put all this aside. This goes together. Now, this is where you're going to start getting into washers. Some, uh, a lot of these, you're going to have to really pay attention to which way they go. Don't let this scare you, but just keep an eye on which way they go and put them back the same way. Under this handle is going to be a washer. Right here is a little washer. This one is flat. I guess you can see that this one's flat. Some of them have a curve. Some of them have a little curve outward so that when this handle hits them, it springs, it springs out and holds low, holds a pressure against this drag nut. This one doesn't have it. So we just pull this washer off. There we go. I still like to keep track of the way it went. So I'm going to put it face down over here and then put the handle over the top of it. Now, just simply back this drag nut off. There's nothing really to worry about in here, but what I am going to use this for, I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to take Here's the second set of washers we got to worry about. Let me see if I can get this to zoom in for you. You have a star washer and you have two 
washers that are opposing each other. I don't know if y'all can see this. Let me get this star washer out. Right here, two washers opposing each other. There's a gap in the middle and they're touching on the sides. They're spring-loaded washers and they have to go back the same way. So what I use is I like to use this, this little uh, cup of the drag nut to hold them all. Just take them off one at a time, flip it and put it in there just like it was when it was running or just like it was when you were using the reel. Same with these. These are the two opposing nut or washers. I think you'd have to focus for you guys. There's a gap there, y'all can see it. Where my fingers are, it's touching. So you have to put them back that way. This little screwdriver has a magnet, which works really good. Try to, well, maybe not. Oh, here we go. That's the way to go. Now these two look flat, but I still want to keep them that direction, the same direction they were. So they go in there like that. Now all this, the whole stack of washers that was here is in here the way they went. And I know all I got to do is pull them out and put them on. Let's put that aside. Now we got to start unscrewing these screws right here to get this, this side plate off. Now this plate should come right out, I believe. Hold on. Oh, no. One more right there. There's always one more screw. Sometimes, it, oh, no, that's not the screw. Sometimes it's going to take a little force. Not much, though. There we go. Make sure nothing's coming with the cot at the top. There we go. Now, what you have here, this is just your gears here. You have your gear down there at the plastic gear that goes to the worm gear to turn it so that your your worm gear goes back and forth. Then you have your brass gear here, which turns your spool. It's fairly simple. You got to grease these gears, but that's about it. That's all you got to do here. This right here, this sleeve, is what rides inside of the anti-reverse bearing which is here, that right here is your inner reverse bearing. It's a little cam lock type bearing that when this, this sleeve here tries to turn backwards, these cams lock down on it to hold it. Yeah. This is what I ended up cleaning and re-oiling and it's, it's working a lot better. It, you know, these are moving mechanical parts, so they do need to be cleaned or else they won't work properly. So you have to concentrate on this one, this bearing, greasing your gears and your bearing over here, bearing that's on the shaft, which rides behind here. And your slides here, where your, uh, your, what do you call it, your cast button slides. And on your worm gear, you got to grease your worm gear and all the bearings there. So let's get to doing all that, and then I'm gonna start showing you how to put it all back together. This is the regular, this is regular bearing lube, bearing oil, and I am generous with it. Not, not trying to be stingy with it at all. I'll be quite generous. There we 
go. Now you gotta watch, this little gear is gonna wanna walk around because there's nothing holding it. But just make sure it doesn't come flying out. Now I wanna oil. This mechanism slides. I'll try to do this without throwing springs. Oof. Boy, that a lot moved. <laughs> All right. There. Won't do that again. But as you'll see that this all this plastic slides together as you push this casting button. So we're gonna go ahead and put a little oil in all these little bushings here. That's so that it all slides good. All right, make sure my springs are still in there. Greased up this gear a little bit. I've oiled that bearing. Now I'm gonna take my brake oil and again, generously lube up all of these, all of them in a reverse, uh, what do you call them? cam locks. There we go. All right, I also want to get up in here where this worm gear comes through and squirt a little oil in there up underneath that gear. Now we're going to go ahead and put this back on, this side cover. Just slides back together. Nice and easy, don't force it. If, if you get a force it, something's wrong. looking to torque these things down. It's just going into a look. Oh my goodness, I knocked the whole camera. Sorry guys. Not looking to torque these down. It's just going into aluminum and holding plastic down. Now we go back to our assortment of washers. First two. Just like that. Second two, the spring washers, just like that. And I'm sorry you hear my dog in the background probably whimpering. I gotta go let her out. Let's put the star washer in. And then we screw the cap back, the drag nut. Little tip, it's gonna wanna spin the shaft because there is no drag on it. So, once you get it started, put your hand here on the worm gear, stopping it from moving. And it'll keep the, it'll keep the shaft from turning. All right, let me go let her out. Now what we need next is, not for this to fall over, we need this handle, but first we need this washer. Put the washer on, little slots. You'll find it with the other washers too. The center is oblong shaped to match the shaft so that they don't spin on the shaft. And then the handle. Put 
Boop. There you go. Simple. Put the nut back on. Just a slight tightening, not super tight. Take the little anti-reverse or anti anti-loosening plate. <laughs> Doesn't quite line up this time with this with the bolt, so take and just tighten just a tad more till it lines up. There we go. And then put the screw back in. Now put the cap back on for the brake. Alrighty. Now put the spool back in. Here we go. We got no line sticking out. No line inside here. Everything's good. Fit in there. While we're on this side, we want to oil this bushing where the other side of the worm gear rides. Take our cap. Put it back in position. Pull the lock. And tighten her down. Bam. Loosen that a little bit. There you go. Now we're going to put a little grease right here on the worm gear and then that's it. There you go. Good and clean. All right, guys, there you go. Wasn't all that difficult, was it? You know, these reels, get, they're pretty easy to get into nowadays, so I guess I have really no excuse to not clean them. It's just me. I'm just used to reels at work, and you don't have to baby them. You know, I've had, I've had the old blues where they were the teardrop shape reels i've had them back when they were like this and they worked you didn't have to clean them every other trip or every month they simply worked the same with this one this is a 1310 mag quantum this was like a 30 dollar reel they work they just get to a point where you're tired of looking at them also, there's none of these reels have instant and reverse. These all had the the keepers. So the advancements came. They had instant and reverse. They had smoother reels. Then we all moved on to better, newer reels. But sometimes you just you miss those times where you could just use a reel and it worked, and you didn't have to worry about it. Anyway, we're getting off topic. That's how you clean your reels. That's how you keep them from failing and you're losing a tournament because of it. Thank you guys for watching it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. I'll see y'all next time.